Today we are back in the shed and we are doing a shed upgrade day. Now because we started Cole 2.0 last week, there is a lot of shop upgrades that I wanna do in the shed because it just makes life a thousand times easier when you have the right equipment. So as you can see on the floor, we have a whole bunch of steel that I had delivered just locally and uh, we're gonna try and build a bloody welding table out of it. Now up on this whiteboard, it looks very confusing, but what I've done is just drawn out how many runs of uh, steel that I want. So my perfectly drawn table right here is gonna come to life because I've drawn it so well. How can I stuff this up? Now for the slats, the material I got is uh, 50 by 25 wide, so it's nice and flat. And for the legs, I got 40 by 40. Now they're both in 2.5 wall thickness. So this is gonna be bloody strong. I'm really excited to turn this corner here into a sort of fabricating area. I do really wanna get a TIG in the future and having a welding table and a TIG machine just goes hand in hand because you gotta sit down and get it very accurate. So having power there and the drill press and the welder here, I think that the table will go nicely in this corner and having it on casters is gonna be amazing too. I do plan on buying a uh, cold saw eventually, I just can't really afford it at the moment, but I would love to build a stand for the Azito drop saw as well, just so it saves us doing this on the ground like I am. And then if we get time, I might even be able to make a bench grinding stand as well, that would be bloody awesome. But first things first, I gotta cut 18 lengths at 850 long out of the 50 by 25 box section, which is a lot of cuts, so it's gonna be pretty painful, but I'm gonna smash that out first. Then once that's smashed out, we can start laying it on the ground and start tacking it together. Now, I know this content is a little bit different for my channel, but I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope I enjoy making this. So let's get into making a welding table. Fun done, 17 to go. Righto, that is the top cut. We have nine in each stack, which is a total of 18. Exactly how many we need, so that's great. That actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I thought that 18 cuts would have taken forever, but only took about 10 minutes, so let's keep going. It's time to lay these out on the floor. Now my measurement in theory was 1476, so we are so close. Now the hard part at the moment in my brain is how I'm gonna get this to be perfectly flat because my floor is uneven. It's almost like I need a welding table to build my welding table, kind of sucks. But what I did with my tray is I lifted everything up off the ground just using box section. So I might be able to achieve the same thing that way I know that I'm square. But I do need to cut two lengths of this at 1480 long now, so I'll quickly do that on the saw. That's actually worked out pretty well. What I did is I cut two pieces at 750. Now, obviously our runs are 850, which means I want 50 mil each side of overhang. So if you put that up there, 50 mil on each side. So what that does is basically just make sure that it's 750 there and it's 750 here. And we are dead square and parallel. I've checked it all with the tape. So what I need to do now is just weld this first one on. All I gotta do is straight edge along here and use our spaces in the center and just keep working our way back. And that should make it dead square and dead level. This is exactly how I built my tray up on little blocks like this and it worked out really well. So I'll get the grinder out, I'll start cleaning up all the edges and I'll clean off all the paint on both sides. Everything is now prepped and ready to be tack welded on. So I'm gonna get this tacked up and then start welding it along. So I'll chuck you guys on a time lapse.
as you can see, that is the top made. Now I've overshot by the thickness of my uh, spacer there. I just miscalculated that. So I have to flip it over, cut the rest of that off and we are ready to start making the base. Not gonna lie to you guys, I did make a huge mistake. So what you just seen, was half of the mistake and then half of this version. Because my saw doesn't cut this properly and I was using this as like a straight edge across there and it just wasn't working. It was kind of going in a little bit like that. So as you look down the run, my slats were going just a little bit in. So what I did is I quickly made this like sort of jig and it goes under and it allows me to keep that 50 mil gap and square it up off the actual frame and not use my wonky cuts as the square. So I bloody cooked it in other words and it set me back a couple of hours which absolutely sucks but we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna flip this over. We're gonna start measuring for the leg. And hopefully I can actually finish this today because that took bloody ages. So yeah, flip the dog over and start making the base. Righto, just because it's getting late, I have gone ahead and cut all the things I need to cut because that thing is bloody loud. So I'm gonna start piecing it together and tacking it in. I already can see that this is bowed and I don't think it's from heat. I think it's from when it was sitting outside, it was sitting in the sun and it was actually overhanging a little bit and I've used the overhanging part for some reason. So I've cut one for the middle as well. We might have to like jack it up fold that back and then get our center brace in and that'll stop that from ever bowing again. So it's now time to start piecing all the legs together, get the bloody dogs on there. It's now time to start welding these legs on and then we will have a welding table. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do the casters yet, but I'll just get this done, see how it goes, then we'll look at doing the casters. Everyone looks bloody good in safety today. I look like a bloody legend. <laughs> so close to finishing but the mistake i made has cost me finishing this video today we're gonna have to roll this onto another day to put these casters on i'm completely out of time it's getting late and it's sunday afternoon but as you can see we are looking pretty bloody good actually now the supports i just knocked in they're fully welded up i've just got to do a couple little welds that i can't get to at the moment um, once it's flipped over that is all i have time for tonight but stay on the video don't go anywhere we'll roll on to the next day and we'll get this finished see ya all right, because of that one mistake last weekend, we completely ran out of time. It is now the next bloody weekend. Where I left off is I welded those middle braces in and we're just about finished with the welding. So it's time to do these caster wheels. Now, I just want to quickly let you guys know that this is not a very well planned out video. I literally ordered the steel. I had no idea how I was even going to make the table. I just ordered two of each of the lengths and then I went and bought the caster wheels. So I didn't really think about the fact that I needed plates for the bottom to actually mount the caster wheels too. So these are the caster wheels. Obviously, you've got to chuck four bolts in the bottom of that thing and these are off Cole's tray they are the um, off cuts when I put the tail lights in on the on the back I used a hole saw and that's what come out of it so my plan is basically to have that and then I'm going to drill four holes in it and put our casters on like that now most people would make this square but we're going to be round we're going to be a little bit different now on the other side I'm going to weld a bolt right about there so we can actually screw them in and adjust the height and then one of these nuts will get welded to this plate like that and then that plate will get welded into this 40 by 40 box section and it'll be an adjustable caster wheel honestly was pretty tempted to just go like that weld that bastard there but i think it will be good having these adjustable and removable it's a little bit extra work but i think in the long run it'll be worth it now i'm not going to lie to you guys i've been in the shed now for a couple of hours i did have this thing flipped over and i was checking the level and the slats weren't exactly level they were just kind of bowed in the middle here all I did is took a floor jack and I just jacked up that bit and I kept doing it and stretching the steel and now we're pretty well dead flat across the top. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get these caster wheels on and mounted and then we can flip this thing over and get the top fully sanded back.
thrusters are now mounted. Now we have the two non-swivel ones up the back here and two swivel ones with the brakes over on that side. Because I'm gonna flip this over now, I just went ahead and painted the whole bottom strip and we are looking bloody primo. So it's time to flip it over. It's kind of the moment of truth to see whether it will rock or not. And then we can start sanding the top section, get it ready for a coat of full paint. She's almost ready for her first job. Slider boys. That is heavy. It's definitely a little bit of rock corner to corner. So we'll just quickly sort that out. All right, guys, that is a success. As you can see, I can grab here, pull it around. I just had to make one little adjustment just to make it a little bit easier, but we can wheel that wherever we want now. All that's left to do now is to sand the top of it and paint the bottom section of it. So I'm gonna to get to that now. And here we go. Bah, oh, there we go. One second for you guys, that was about an hour for me. We are fully sanded on the top. That job absolutely sucked. Started using the disc grinder with like a polishing pad on it. It was working really well, but it wore out very quickly. So I just kept using sandpaper. So it's finally time for the last job with this welding table and that is paint. So let's get into that. I've got crap all over my face, but just ignore that. This thing turned out bloody insane. I'm so happy to have a welding table. My knees are getting friggin' old, my back's blown out, and this thing is just gonna make life so much easier in the bloody shed. So she's all painted up, guys. I did actually run out of paint, so I do need to do the underneath of these rails. But for the most part, she's painted. I definitely used to do a lot of sort of different videos, but lately it's just been shed content. So I wanna make this space super enjoyable to work in. Little things like the fan and the welding table and I put that whirly bird in and just, and having the drill press hooked up now is just making life so much easier. You can see even with the wheels, that's the first time I've been able to use the drill press is to drill those bolt holes in the caster wheel plates. You can see the workshop is a mess at the moment. What I'm thinking about doing is having that as the fabrication corner. So this table will probably go over there as well as I do want to make a, um, a grinder stand for my Roby bench grinder and belt sander. What I do want to do is make the stand for the bench grinder, but tonight I'm actually out of time. So I might come back tomorrow and we'll finish that off. We'll clean up this corner here and we'll chuck everything in the corner and make it look mint. What I really wanna do is turn this into the metalwork corner. So I'm gonna clear it out. We're gonna put the welding table probably right up against this bench. I then wanna build a bench grinder stand and then we'll probably end up moving the drill press down a little bit further. Now the best part about building that stand is we get to use our welding table for the first time. And just to let you know, I did coat the top of this in WD-40. It's kind of what's recommended online. So we shouldn't get any rust on top. Now, obviously this is just a pretty cheap Roby bench grinder, but I'm gonna build a stand that's a little bit bigger just in case we upgrade. I mean, we probably will upgrade to like a Heron Forbes or something like that in the future. So what I'll do is I'll just make the stand for it a little bit wider up top. Now I've got a fair bit of box section just sitting over there. I've got some 150 by 50, which is gonna be perfect for the top of this. I'm actually very excited to use this welding table for the first time, guys. This thing is gonna be bloody clutch in the future. I can't wait to do the sliders on it. That's gonna be the true test of this thing. But anyway, I'm gonna start measuring this up and we're gonna get some stand action going on then we can clear out this corner and start laying out everything how I want it to be
All right, as you can see, we are done. That is a stand for a bench grinder. Now all I did is I cut two bits at 250 mil. Then I just added some angle iron on the side, drilled two holes in it so I can dyna bolt it to the ground. And our bench grinder is gonna sit perfectly on top of that. So we are good to go. Now as for the welding table, I have no idea why I didn't own one of these early. That is honestly the first time I've welded on a table. I've never, never welded on a table. I've always had to do it on the floor or make up something janky. Honestly, that table come in bloody clutch. You can see I was clamping stuff down, doing full welds right around. It's super easy. You can walk right around the table and get to the whole thing and we knocked that up in no time. Basically what I'm saying, if you've got a shed and you like welding, build a welding table, 400 bucks and you can have your own. Now the only thing I don't have for this is paint, so it's gonna stay raw like that for a little bit. And the next step is to clean out this corner. I have no idea where anything is going at the moment, so let me just figure it out and then I'll get back to you guys. Finally done, it's literally been about four hours. I changed things and then I changed it again. Then I bloody changed it again and we ended up where we're at now. Very, very happy with how this is set up. We have a new welding table sitting right there, the bench grinder on the bench grinding stand, and then the welder is right below a power point so I can quickly plug it in. Got some clamps and some magnets and a speed square and all that just to help with the table. Now obviously if we're doing a big project, I'll probably wheel it out into the middle, but it is nice to be able to whip something quick up there. Now this bench here is 750 wide. The bench that was here is 650 wide. So it is now over there and it's gonna stay there for the foreseeable future. I am getting some racking for here. So all this will be tidied up and um, it'll look a lot better. And then in this corner where this bench was, we now have the jack, I bought a new stool and then I just made up this little rack and we have our broom and dustpan and some rulers and all that sort of stuff, as well as the drill press in the corner. So this is now a functional little work area. So one thing that I am massive on is the feng shui or the feel of the workspace that you're in. And this workspace now feels a lot better, a lot less cluttered, and it makes me want to come in here and do work. But honestly, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how this looks now. I'm so stoked on that welding table. It is the feature of this video. Definitely one of the best things I've ever invested my time and money into. Now I'm gonna end this video here. I appreciate all you guys watching. Like the video if you like the video, comment down below. If there's anything you would like to see in this shed, I'd really like to hear what your guys' thoughts are. So thanks for watching guys. See you on the next episode, bye.